Welcome back to Open Topics. This is episode number 11. This one I'm talking about recent comic book and comic book related news. Yes, my my thoughts on First, let's talk about trailers released and saying on Comic-Con. Um, one thing, I would basically do a reaction video for... I have no idea how to do one at all. So, I'm going to get my thoughts on There were three trailers I have watched. I did not watch the Godzilla one. I still have not watched Bell Angelina. So, the only ones I'm going to talk about in this one are the ones for Titans, Aquaman, and Shazam. Let's start with Aquaman first. Aquaman, because I've heard so much good good stuff happening with this film, and I saw it, you're like, wow, this looks really good. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's an awesome trailer. Uh, probably one of the highlights of this trailer is seeing Black Manta use his, he, use his laser vision from his helmet. Yeah, that was amazing. The visuals look fantastic. Uh, Jason Moore look, looks like he's having a blast playing this character. And the actress leaves Mira, smoking hot, and she looks great in the movie. Next is Shazam, which, yeah, they're taking from the New 52 origin story. Though they're doing their own twist on it, for one thing. Uh, there's no uh, Talkie Tawny. Yep, he's not in the movie at all, not that I see. Uh, I was curious, though, how they're going to do Shazam. And they pretty much do him how he's normally depicted. Just an old man who just, on the verge of death, they just has to say his name Shazam. And... Bam, becomes Captain Marvel. Though, there is one thing I don't like about the costume. I, I do like the fact it's red. I like that. I like the red uh, lightning bolt that goes basically straight. I like the look of the costume. Um, I thought it was a little odd they decided not to include the hood. Um, yeah, because new the, the Gary Frank design for the Shazam costume is very much in tune with the classic style that it's having. That it's never had over the years. The big lightning bolt, um, the fluidly uh, cape. The cape, I couldn't really get a look, a look at it because the trailer barely showed off. The, yeah, it looks like he has a cape, but it barely shows it off at all. And it doesn't show he has his hood he has attached to the thing. Because Shazam has a, well, even though he's called Cap, even though a lot of people like myself refer to him as Captain Marvel. Now, I get the fact he can't have an ongoing series Captain Marvel. Fine, whatever. But why call him Shazam for? That makes really no sense at all. This has been a big problem with the character people have had for the past, oh, six years that they've had this. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the trailer looks good. It, I heard that they're going to throw everything on comedy in the movie. And, yes, it is kind of funny, which I got to praise it for that. And I will talk in a minute about the Shazam ongoing series. That's one of the other news that came out for it. Okay, the last trailer, Titans. It looks interesting. Yes, and I do know about the uh, Robin dropping an F-bomb. It says, F-Batman. And he says this right after he kills five guys, saving Raven from these people. Now, I'm watching, it's like, okay, Dick Grace isn't here. He's a detective for whatever city the show is set in. It could be Bloodhaven, for all I know. Um... Why in the world does he put on the Robin costume for? Because he's an adult. Why is he still wearing the Robin costume? Why isn't he wearing the Nightwing costume? I would love to see what it looks like in live action because Nightwing costume has never been shown live action before. This would be a perfect way of doing it. Uh, Starfire looks okay. I like the fact that they gave her orange hair. But it looks like they, they're not giving her orange skin, which... That's really weird. Uh, her not having orange... Actually, she's a redhead, but... Why isn't her skin painted? I mean, I get the fact this is a budget from streaming service, fine. But was there something wrong with uh, with, with not painting her skin orange? Look at Gamora from Marvel Comics. Her skin is whole entire thing, and I've seen pictures of this. Her skin is painted green, like they did for the Orion Slave Girls from Star Trek, and yet Starfire, her skin is not orange. What's wrong with this picture? And the way she's dressed, she looks like a stereotypical uh, teenage, like, a female teenage rich girl. Okay? This is not how traditionally she, she kind of dressed like this comic, but not all the time. And she doesn't fight crime in street clothes. Uh, Raven looks fantastic. I like the fact that they gave her blue hair, which that was a nice touch. Um, I'm really hoping they give her uh, the classic George Perez attire. I'm really hoping of that. Uh, Beast Boy barely shows him the trailer. 
Uh, no, Donna Troy, surprisingly. Yeah, I mean, this is probably supposed to be based upon the Marvel from George Bradstein Titans. Um, I did see Hawk and Dub briefly in the trailer. Uh, I saw Dub. His costume looks fantastic. I like that. They don't really show Hawk very much. Um, I don't, I've heard a rumor that Oracle may show up on the show. That was a rumor months ago when this show was going to be on TNT. And they're also going to call our show Blackhawk for some reason. That was a really bizarre thing. I'm kind of glad it's going to show up on the streaming service. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's that. Next up is the Shazam ongoing series. Done by Jeff Johns. Okay. About freaking time to do something with him. Because his last appearance was two years ago. And a cameo in Help Laser Rebirth. Yeah, two years. I'm like, where the heck has this character been for the past two years? It's really bizarre. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Yeah, that was Tell Rumor for a while. But, yeah, that's happening. Uh, X-Men Black. People thought it was going to be another uh, X-Men ongoing series. No, it's going to be a series of one-shots. Each one-shot is focused on a different villain. Like, basically, these villains were confirmed part of these one-shots. Magneto, Mystique, Mojo, the Juggernaut... I had to look up the article, but I remember it was like five people who was actually part of this lineup. Yeah. Um, the first one shot is going to be done by Chris Claremont. Okay, that actually sounds interesting. I like that. I really do. Because Chris Claremont is one fantastic writer. And this is probably the first book he's worked on that I can think of for Marvel since the Nightwing ongoing series. Uh, not Nightwing. Uh, Night crawler ongoing series and it, i believe it's back in 2014 so this is first marvel work he's done in four years um this is as far as i know anyways i think he's not one shot since then, but yeah but i like the fact he's doing it but so by him yeah that's really good um mystique is done by the person who's doing the uh, uh another gold annual which is done by Shani McGuire, see if I can get the thing moved properly. Yeah. Uh, Shani McGuire is doing the writing for that one. Mm -hmm. I love the cover for Magneto. It looks fantastic. It's done by J. Scott Campbell. Mm -hmm. The Mojo one is done by Scott Ackerman and Nick Brasho. I'm looking forward to this one because I love Nick Brasho's artwork. I'm not familiar with Scott Ackerman, but this is, is going to be interesting. Juggernaut. Robbie Thompson. And artwork by Sean Crystal. Uh, I believe Sean Crystal... Um, yeah, this is the artist for the Mother Panic series. The guy is a fan. This person, is, I think this is a guy. Fantastic artist. And I'm a big fan of Robbie Thompson. Looking forward to this one shot. Yeah, that's the one who does the, the Mojo what? Yeah, the Mojo one. Actually, that's uh, Juggernaut. I kind of forgot she was having one. Um, her book is done. going to be done by Leah Williams. I'm not familiar with her person. Yeah, I wrote the first Golden Age. I was kind of done by Chris Bocciolo. I mean, this guy's drawn a lot of X books in the past like 20 years. I mean, I I looked the first back he did was back in like 2000. So he's been doing, doing he's been on and off for the X Men books for the past 20 years. So I'm not, not that surprised. Okay, fine. But, but yeah, um, I love the fact we're doing these one shots. Uh, a lot of people were thinking this was going to be another ongoing series. Nope. Yeah. But speaking of, this is another X-Men related thing. Uh, Uncanny X-Men's coming back. Yes! Uncanny X-Men's coming back. I mean, it's been three years since this book ended. I mean, it got replaced first with Extraordinary X-Men for a couple of years. And then they got replaced again. That's how I got replaced with Gold. And now they're ending both Gold and Blue to bring back Uncanny X-Men. This is a title people have won see come back for three years okay because we okay so i guess marvel is finally listening to the fans and bringing back certain titles they really wanted to see first the bring back fantastic four which by the way also ended in 2015 yeah two titles that ended three years ago apparently coming back i mean first is fantastic four uh which is gonna be done by dan sly and san Bracilli, which i'm looking forward to that and of course, we have Kenny X come back. Um, as for who's going to be writing it, they have not announced who the creative team is going to be. Um, if not Chris Claremont, if he's not going to do another era in the book, um, who would I suggest do it again? Who suggest do it? Uh, maybe Colin Bunn. He might be a good idea. So we should do a good job with um, 
X Men Blue. That might be a possibility. Uh, Jeff Lemire is definitely a good idea because Nick Fantastic said with the X Men. The button might be not a lot of people's first choice because of what he did with the previous. Uh, Kenny X Men series. Yeah. Because. Well, with that one, it got a mixed reception. My apologies for that. Yeah, the the thing I have in the back of my chair fell off. Anyways, yeah. Um, a lot of people probably will probably not want Bun in the book because of what happened with the last fine, which was very mixed, and people didn't care for Greg Land and the artwork. Though Greg Land is on Astonishing X-Men, no one's stopping him. Though, I don't think he's going to go back to any X-Men. Oh, God, no, I hope not. Um, what artists are like the book? Well... I like one of the other artists who did um, who did either uh, Karen Gillian's run because during Gillian's run he had fantastic artwork. I wouldn't mind also Nick Bradshaw through the book. Uh, Arthur Adams would be fantastic. I mean, it's plenty of good artists. Just don't give it to Greg Land again because no one will buy it. People do not like Greg Land on the X books because the guy has been kind of stuck on the X books now for the past like four or five for the past six years. Keep him away. Don't put him on the book. End up by Greg Land. It's fine. Okay. Um, on a sad note, speak of another X book, uh, Old Man Logan is ending after 50 issues. I don't have a really big problem with this because, well, this was expected. Marvel's going to end this series because the original Logan's back. So cut Axe ax Old Man Logan. Take the Wolverine title from, from, from Laura, even though she's earned it for years. Okay, I don't have a really problem with this, but I am surprised at the issue number they're ending at. Uh, they're ending at issue 50. I'm like, 50? When was the last time Marvel released? Now, I, I actually looked this up prior to doing this video. The last time Marvel released an issue 50 was back in 2012. So it's been six years. The last two books to have an issue 50 was Astonishing the X-Men and Hulk Volume 2. And that was the one with, with, with uh, the Red Hulk. I'm like, wow, that is actually something. This is probably the first book not to have a relaunch to actually have 50 issues. I guess people were uh, basically, uh, I guess was one of the biggest complaints that apparently Marvel can't do a 50th issue because they're scared of that number. And yet... Here we have Owen Logan and issue 50. I mean, DC's produced several issue 50s over the past couple years. And here at, Mar and at Marvel, we don't see issue 50. Yes, Miss Marvel did celebrate 50 this issue with the issue 30, the 30th issue of this current volume. But this is basically some, a book that started with number one and never restarted. It went from number one to 50 without restarting. This is by far the first book to do this in six years. You got at least got praise for doing that, and it's gonna produce an annual. Yep. And the book itself only had two writers its whole run, only two, and those two writers were Jeff Lemire, who did the first 24 issues, and Ed Bronson, who's the current writer of the series. And here's kind of the thing: it's a really damn good book, and it's fantastic. I love it. It's a, it's really good. I'm trying to think, there was any other. Um, basically related news that, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think here of recent stuff. Let me think. Hmm. Let's, let me think here. Oh yeah. Um, Injustice 2, the comic book is ending at issue 36. It's about time. Because here's kind of the thing with this book. It's longer than the, than years one through five of Injustice Gods Among Us. Because those were 12 issues apiece. This one I kind of thought would end issue 12. But no. 36. After like a year and a half we finally end the book. Like a year after the game came out. We finally going to end the damn book. So yeah. So this one I'm not surprised. But it's a good comic book. And 
I gotta say it's about time for it to go. Because it's a game time comic. Game time comics don't usually last very long. But excuse me. Oh yes. Uh there is something else. I read an article about this this past week. Uh Tom King's got a bodyguard at San Diego Comic Con. Yes he does. Why? Because the events of issue fifty really tick a lot of people off. To the point where people are sending him death threats. I'm like, seriously? We're going through this bullcrap again? Sending rare death threats because you don't like what they do? I mean, the last time I saw this was two years ago with with uh, Steve Rogers, uh, Captain America number one, when he said Hell Hydra at the end of the book. Yeah. But as far as I can tell for Guggenham, who was the current writer of X-Men Gold, though I think he's one of the writers I think he should do with Kenny X-Men, he hasn't received death threats because at least promised a wedding. I mean, not be wedding people wanted, it, not people with motive to see, but at least he had a freaking wedding, which is the first wedding Marvel's had in several years. I mean, the last cup, last couple of the fishers got married by Marvel, Marvel Comics. Actually, it was two couples. Uh, one was uh, Northstone, his husband, though he's barely shown up since then, and Deadpool and Shaquilla. Yeah, his de- smoking hot demon wife. Who left him, even though they're still legally married, and married Dracula. I have no idea why Duggan did that for That was one of the most bizarre things he came up with, but I'm trying to think, there was anything else really newsworthy? Um that I could think of? Hmm. Nothing else I could think of. Uh unless something else I missed, uh please leave us in the comments below of stuff like big Comic related news released recently. Um, yeah, please listen to the comments below. Uh, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Okay? But until I see you on my next video, bye.